A lineman's safety equipment is the only thing standing between him and several thousand volts of electricity. Equipment that's damaged or dirty may be worse than no protection at all because a lineman may depend on it to keep him safe in situations where it won't. In this part of the program, you'll learn to identify the safety equipment most commonly used in overhead line maintenance. You'll see how to test it and take care of it and how to use it properly. We'll talk about personal protective equipment, clothing, rubber gloves and sleeves, and leather protectors. And we'll also discuss insulating gear used to cover energized lines and equipment. Let's start with a load and personal protective gear. It's a good practice always to wear a long sleeve shirt with the sleeves rolled down and buttoned to protect your arms from flash burns. The shirt should be made of 100% cotton, which will burn away quickly if hit by the flame from an electric flash. Synthetic fabrics such as nylon and polyester can melt and stick to your skin, making a flash burn even worse. A plastic hard hat protects your head from falling objects and from accidental contact with a live line. Safety glasses shield your eyes from dirt, solid objects, and electric flashes. Rubber sleeves and gloves protect against contact with energized lines and equipment. They're kept in bags in special storage compartments in the truck when not in use. Before a lineman puts on his sleeves and other protective gear, he should always check them for damage. He looks for small nicks, cuts, or scratches that could provide an opening for him to come in contact with an energized line or piece of equipment. Rubber gear should also be checked for dirt and moisture, which can conduct electricity and reduce the gear's insulating value. Rubber gloves are checked for holes by air testing. Each glove is rolled up partway from the cuff to inflate it. If the glove doesn't stay inflated, it's got a hole in it and shouldn't be worn. Rubber gloves, sleeves, and other insulating safety gear are periodically lab tested to make sure they're maintaining their insulating properties. Rubber gloves are covered with leather protectors to keep from being damaged. Protectors don't have to be airtight, but they should be free from cuts and nicks. That way, there's a better chance of noticing a new cut that may have gone through to damage the rubber glove. The personal insulating gear alone protects only his head, hands, and arms. The rest of his body is still vulnerable to electrical contact. So to protect himself, a lineman places rubber or plastic insulating covers over any lines, connections, and equipment he may come in contact with. There are two general types of insulating covers. One type is made of rubber and can be installed by hand, as long as a lineman is wearing his personal protective gear. The other type, called hot line cover equipment, must be handled with a hot stick. Hot line cover equipment can be made of either rubber or plastic. Rules governing the use of these two types of insulating covers vary from company to company, so make sure you know your company's policy before using them. Let's first take a closer look at rubber hand-installed insulating gear. It's stored in compartments in the truck for protection, like a lineman's personal protective gear. These compartments contain insulator hoods, line hose, and rubber blanket. Insulator hoods fit over pin-type insulators. Rubber line hose is used to cover individual energized conductors. And insulating blankets are wrapped around bulky, hard-to-cover equipment, like switches and disc insulators. Blankets are rolled up for storage, either in a compartment on the truck or in metal cans, so they won't develop cracks from being folded. Wooden or plastic clamps, often referred to as clothespins, keep the blankets rolled up when not in use and hold them in place when they're covering equipment. Now let's watch a lineman install the rubber goods. As we said earlier, this type of insulating gear can be installed by hand, as long as the lineman is wearing his personal protective gear, rubber gloves, leather protectors, rubber sleeves, hard hat, and safety glasses. The first rubber insulating gear he'll install is line hose over the neutral wires. A man on the ground sends the line hose up in a canvas bag designed to protect them. Rubber line hose is split along its length so it will slip easily over a conductor. 
edges of the split overlap to hold the hose in place on the line. The next piece of gear sent up is an insulating blanket to cover the neutral spool. This area is irregular in shape, so a rubber blanket is necessary to cover it adequately. This helps to keep him isolated from ground, which is necessary when working on energized equipment. We'll talk more about grounds and how to handle them later in the program. When he's finished with the neutrals, he'll move on to cover the primaries. He places line hose over the primary just as he did with the neutrals, and he places hoods over the primary insulators. The hoods fit tight and stay in place by themselves. Another blanket is sent up to cover the jumper connector. He drapes the blanket over the jumper and he'll pin it securely in place. As we mentioned earlier, some companies use rubber hand-installed insulating equipment, like that we've just seen, while others require hotline cover equipment installed with a hot stick. But even though hotline cover equipment is installed with a hot stick, it still has the same function as hand-installed gear. There are many different types of hotline cover equipment. Two of the most common are line guard and insulator hoods, which are normally made of plastic. Let's take a look at a lineman installing a line guard. A line guard is normally sent up with a hot stick already attached. This makes it easier and safer for the lineman to handle. It would be awkward for him to attach the hot stick to the line guard while he's on the pole. Like the hand-installed line hose we saw earlier, the line guard has a split along its length so it can be placed over the conductor. Once it's in position, the lineman simply unhooks his hot stick. Like rubber gear, Plastic hotline equipment should be carefully stored in a clean, dry place, such as this trailer, to maintain its insulating qualities. Hotline equipment is sometimes used on higher voltages than rubber hand-applied insulating gear, so this trailer is heated to keep moisture from condensing on the equipment. At the front of this hot stick trailer is a separate compartment where plastic line guards are kept. Fiberglass hot sticks are stored in the main body of the trailer. It's particularly important to keep the finish on press hot sticks clean, dry, and free of scratches and scrapes. Small amounts of moisture and dirt can collect in scratches on the fiberglass surface and provide a path for electric current. Many companies have specific safety rules for the care of hotline equipment, so make sure you follow your company's procedures. Another important type of equipment that must be kept clean and dry is rope. Dirt and moisture in the polypropylene rope used to lower this transformer could conduct current to the man on the ground if the rope were to contact a live conductor. It's even more important to keep hemp rope clean and dry. Hemp is a natural fiber and moisture can cause it to decay. Synthetic ropes, on the other hand, are made of woven plastic and won't decay. This polypropylene rope, for example, not only is resistant to decay, but also has electrical insulating qualities. Whatever the type, all ropes should be neatly coiled and hung up out of the way when not in use. Well, that about covers our discussion of the care and use of safety equipment. All the procedures we've shown are based on the same basic principle. Treat safety gear with care and common sense. Don't throw it around carelessly or put it where it could become damaged, dirty, or wet. Remember, you depend on your safety gear to protect you from high voltages. In the next part of the program, we'll see that the same sort of care should be given to climbing equipment, body belts, safety straps, and climbers. We'll show you the correct way to use and maintain climbing equipment and how to identify hazards before you start to climb.